Hello, uh, Peter from Wine Tasting Network here for a few minutes. We're going to take this opportunity to talk about old world and new world wines. We're also going to remind you that in this medium, most of the time you're listening to something or you're watching something and we can't stress enough that we're inviting you to come back to us, talk to us, get on our website, give us your comments, ask us questions and we'll have answers for you. I have had people ask me about the difference between old world and new world wines. We have a beautiful Bordeaux here and compared to a Napa Valley Cabernet here and rather do a tasting, we'll do a quick drawing about how you can view at least the history of old world wines versus new world wines. Now here we are in Napa Valley and on about the same latitude, if you will, of, as Puglia, which is the heel of the boot of Italy, and Turkey. So we're getting the same kind of sun as southern Italy. Bordeaux, much further north, is level with Montreal. Imagine how much further north Champagne would be, Nova Scotia. So it's a question of sun exposure compared to earth dominance in the wines. And so we'll do a little quick uh, drawing. This is not my invention. This came from the marvelous Evan Goldstein at Full Circle Wine Solutions. And so I'll give you a quick example. Uh, on the bottom of our picture, we have earth, the earth tones. At the top is the sun. And then in the middle, we draw that vintage. The middle bar is the year, with the, the specific year of the wine. For old world wines, we'll draw a classic pyramid. And the pyramid will go up from the earth to the bottom. And as you can see, much more of that pyramid is dominated by earth. Only the very tippy top is dominated by the sun. The sun is where you get ripeness, is where you get fruit, is where you get your alcohol levels because of sugar. So in this pyramid, earth dominates. New world wines, where the sun dominates, we're going to reverse that pyramid. We're going to turn it upside down. And so we have an upside down pyramid where now the sun is dominant. And black fruit or ripe fruit for red wines, uh, tropical tones, ripe full pear and apple, will be what dominates. And the earth tones will be much more in the background. You can almost tell by looking at the labels, this is not done on purpose, but you can see that philosophy. For the Bordeaux wines, what's biggest on this label is Bordeaux, a region, a place. You don't know yet, or maybe you do, and you will learn as you get better with wines, that the grapes in Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, are what's in that bottle. The region is dominant, the earth is dominant. For the New World wines, Cabernet Sauvignon, the grape, is always going to be the first thing you see, and then Napa Valley or Rutherford for the Appalachian. This is Aquilia Cabernet Sauvignon that we did. So you can tell even subtly, even subconsciously, we present the fruit in the New World over the earth, which dominates in the Old World. As you can see, that pyramid, as we look at it, for the New World is a little unstable. The sun dominates, but it's an upside down pyramid, and so we'll often use winemaking techniques like oak or other, other ways of preserving these wines to buttress them up. In the old world wine, the, the earth is what dominates. In the new world wines, the fruit is what dominates. Now this is a very quick, fairly broad distinction, say between Cabernet and Bordeaux. Things are changing and, and, and you can't always broad, paint with this broad brush, but this is a quick little note to tell uh, old world wines from new world wines with Cabernet Sauvignon.